All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyo lahat mga kaguro. And of course, welcome back to Gurung Pinoy. And of course, this is all exclusive for final coaching and sa ating classified files na group. Now, before we start with anything else, of course, let us all have our opening prayers. So, sumahan niyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. And of course, you will also be receiving the PDF file for this discussion, as well as our video, it stays in your group. So again, this is classified files discussion number two. We are going to start with our gen ed item. The figure of speech is exemplified by the statement, if you ask for the stars, I'll get them for you. Okay, what figure of speech is this? All right, I see hyperbole. Okay, hyperbole, a.k.a. exaggeration, no? If you ask for the stars, I'll get them for you. Okay, ito yung mga ginagamit mong pambubola kung ikaw ay lalaki. Ito naman yung mga words na inyong narinig mula, mula sa inyong mga maliligaw kung ikaw ay isang babae, no? Pambubola, hyperbole, uh, your exaggeration, and that is a correct choice. Okay, so hyperbole po yung ating hinahanap dito, exaggeration. If you ask for the stars, I'll get them for you. Of course, we know no one can get the stars so unless the star that you are talking about here would be your parol natin. Okay, so hyperbole is a correct choice. Now, remember the different figures of speech that we have, your simile versus metaphor. They are very similar. No? They both uh, compare things, compare objects, but your simile uses the terms as and like while metaphor does not. Okay, so you also have synecdoche and metonymy. Remember our uh, mnemonic, no, my sin, as in synecdoche, is uh, part of me, while metonymy, my mom, is related to me. So when you say synecdoche, your part, a part, is representing the whole or vice versa. For example, you say there are five sails in the sea. So the sails there would stand for um, boats no, or ships. Now, metonymy, on the other hand, you are simply using a related word. A related word lamang yung inyong ginagamit. For example, you say the Malacanang has given instructions on the conduct of the left. Okay, so Malacanang there would mean the government. Okay, so again, my sin is part of me. Sinecdoke, the part represents the whole or vice versa. But my mother, metonymy, is related to me. Okay, so you are only using a related word. Related word lamang. All right, now uh, there is an ask. Risk here, watch our video. We have a video on this. No? So, hanapin nyo lamang sa YouTube, Gurung Pinoy Figures of Speech. Meron po tayong lahat ng klase ng figures of speech doon na na-discuss. And of course, meron siyang examples at meron din siyang uh, Filipino translation. So, hanapin nyo po ito sa ating uh, YouTube channel. So, again, lagyan lamang po ng note no, sa inyong notebook na watch um, figures of speech na Gurung Pinoy ng ating video sa ating YouTube channel. All right? But the correct choice here is hyperbole. We go to the next one. An ecosystem that suffered ecological imbalance can recover naturally through what would be your choice. How can an ecosystem recover naturally? Ecological niche or ecological succession? Okay, the correct choice here, of course, would be ecological succession. Now, ecological succession, this is a process by which the structure of a biological community evolves over time. Kung gaano uh, nag-change, no? nag-evolve yung struktura ng isang community over time. No? Kung ano yung mga makikita mo in that community, kung ano yung mga species na makikita mo din in that community. That would be your ecological succession. Remember your niche, we've talked about it yesterday. When you say niche, that is your role. No? Are you a producer? Are you a consumer? Are you a decomposer? 
Okay, ano yung role mo sa isang ecosystem that's your ecological niche. Now, there are two types of ecological succession. The first one would be primary ecological succession. Lumalabas po ito sa Gen Ed at sa ating bio majors. When you say primary ecological succession, you started with a barren soil. Wala talagang um, species sa inyong soil. No? Wala talagang species sa lugar na yan. Kalbo pa yung lugar. No? And you started um, some, some evolution started in that place. So you call that primary ecological succession. But when you say secondary ecological succession, this follows natural calamities. So meron na dating organisms, meron na dating species in this ecosystem, pero nagkaroon, say, ng wildfire or nagkaroon ng, ng landslide na wala, na, na erase no, lahat ng species na yon. And then eventually, nag-evolve ulit sila, no? nagkaroon ulit ng iba pang organisms. And that would be your, your secondary, I mean, secondary ecological succession. Okay, so that's the difference between your primary and secondary um ecological succession. There also is a difference in terms of pioneer species and climate species. When you say pioneer, pioneer species, these are the first species that have evolved in that ecosystem. Unang-unang klase ng species na nakita sa lugar na yon. But when you say climate species, ito na yung panghuling species. No? So once the, the ecosystem has become stable and nakita na kung ano yung mga species na meron doon, kung ano yung species na nag-thrive, no? naging habitat na nila yung lugar na yon, that will be your climax species. No? From the terms pioneer, unang-una, and climax, of course, panghuli, okay? Rurok na yung climax species, all right? But the uh, correct choice here would be ecological succession. We go to the next question. A virus has a protein shell called blank. Okay, what is your choice? Okay, what is our choice for this item? All right, capsid. I see a lot of capsids sa ating comment box. Okay, and of course, capsid ang ating tumpak na choice. No? So, your capsid, that is a protein shell of your virus, at siya yung nagpoprotecta sa virus, kaya hindi uh, mabilis na napupuksa yung ating viruses because of the protein shell called capsid. Now, remember that viruses are non-living. Hindi po sila considered na organisms. Hindi sila living. No? Um, they have no cellular components. Wala silang iba't ibang parte na nakikita natin sa ating cell. And they need a host to multiply. No? Kailangan nila yung host so that they can multiply. Kailangan nilang ma-infect ma yung isang host para sila ay pwedeng magparami. No? Kaya, uh, kunwari sa ating pandemic, sa COVID-19, it is caused by your coronavirus. And of course, the coronavirus has to enter your body so that they can uh, multiply, so that they can infect you in return. No? So, uh, your viruses are non-living. They need a host so that they can multiply. Now, uh, I've also included here, nakikita niyo din ito sa inyong actual app, your fungi naman, your fungi would have cell walls that are made of glucans and chitin. Okay, so ito yung nawawala, uh, ito yung nahanap sa let, no? What is unique about fungi and their choice there would be they have cell walls that are made up of glucans and chitin. On the other hand, yung inyo namang plants, their cell walls are made up of cellulose, which is a type of your carbohydrate, okay? So, um, complex carbohydrate yung inyong cellulose. Now, what is uh, very funny about your cellulose is that tayo, no, yung ating body, yung ating digestive tract, ay walang cellulase. Wala tayong enzyme to digest cellulose. So, ang nangyayari kapag kayo ay kumakain ng prutas, kumakain ng gulay, which are forms of plants, minsan pag nag-restroom kayo, nakikita nyo pa rin yung gulay at yung plants, no? Because yung atin pong um, uh, digestive tract ay walang enzyme to break down cellulose, which is the cell wall component of your plants. Okay, so capsid ang ating tumpak na choice. We move on to the next question. What do you think will happen when a plant cell is placed in a hypotonic solution? This is a very common question in the lab. Hindi, na, hindi ito nawawala sa gen ed. No? Nakikita nyo ito lagi sa inyong jet, gen ed. Okay, what is your choice? Uh, si Sir John Antonio, sabi ni Sir John Antonio sa bacteria naman, peptidog, peptidoglycans na yung kanilang um, cell wall, yung kanilang shell. Okay, swell, swell, the cell will swell. Okay, merong ibang nagsasabing shrink. 
Okay, now if you are looking at your question here, no, we are talking about hypotonic solution. So when you say hypotonic solution, kokonte yung mga natunaw na solute, marami yung tubig. And so your answer here would be the cell will swell. Okay, so tandaan po, hypo, your cell will swell. Okay, in a hypertonic solution, the cell will shrink. If hyper, it will shrink. And in an isotonic solution, nothing will happen. Okay, so nothing will happen. So again, kapag ka uh, hypotonic solution, basahin maigi, no? So hypotonic solution, the cell will swell. Hypertonic solution, the cell will shrink. And in your isotonic solution, nothing happens. Okay, so nothing happens. Now remember, this is talking about osmosis. Lumalabasin po ito sa let, no? Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane. Okay, basta may water molecules diffusion, that would be osmosis. Now, um, you also have your passive and active transport. Your osmosis and diffusion are examples of your passive transport. Yung pagkakaiba po ng inyong passive and active transport would be if uh, it's using energy in the form of ATP, it's going to be active transport. Kung walang use of energy, it's passive transport. Now, if the movement of molecules should be from an air of, of higher concentration to an air of lower concentration, from high to low, that would be passive transport. From low concentration to high concentration, that is going to be active transport. Okay, so active transport. So again, yung inyo pong tandaan, hypo, swell, hyper, shrink, iso, nothing. Osmosis, tandaan, this is the diffusion of water molecules across the semi-permeable membrane. And of course, passive and active transport. Pag passive, walang use of energy. Movement of materials would be from high concentration to low concentration. While active transport, there's the use of energy in the form of ATP, movement of materials would be from low concentration to high concentration. Remember, yesterday we talked about ATP. This is produced in the process you call cellular respiration, which happens in your mitochondria, which of course is known as the powerhouse of the cell. Okay, so ang compact na choice here would be the cell will swell. All right, we go to the next slide. Which right literally means to produce the body? Also very common question in your gen ed, hindi din nawawala. Okay, what is your choice? What's your answer? Okay, Ma'am Edna says, habeas corpus. Sir Eric Basilispo, habeas corpus. Ma'am Abigail, habeas corpus. Ma'am Jen Brasileño, habeas corpus. Okay, and that is a correct choice. No? So habeas corpus, the writ of habeas corpus. Corpus literally means the body. No? So produce the body, show me the body. That's the writ of habeas corpus. All right, now the writ of amparo naman, this is a more generalized term. No? So general yung term na writ of amparo. Amparo simply means protection in Spanish. And this is protection to life, liberty, and security. Not your right to life, liberty, and security, your natural rights. Now, habeas data, this is um, protection again, or your rights against data collection or rights to data collected against you. That would be your habeas data. Okay, so ang correct choice natin dito is habeas corpus, bring me the body or show me the body. Okay, Miranda writes naman, this is the, the ones that are, or the one that is recited during an arrest. No, When um, somebody gets arrested, the policeman would say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say may, used, may be used against you in court. Okay, so that's your Miranda rights. Miranda rights po, yung tawag doon, you have the right to, re to remain silent. Anyone that you, or anything that you say may be used against you in court. Okay, so that's Miranda rights. All right, next one. Alin sa mga salita Filipino, ang nagsasaad na ang wika ay napagkaunawaan at napagkasunduan ng isang lahi o pangkat. Okay, ano ito? Ano yung uh, word na ating ginagamit o ano yung yung salitang ating hinahanap kapag ka yung sinasabi ay salitang nagsasaad na ang wika ay napagkaunawaan at napagkasunduan. Okay? Mm -hmm. You are all saying arbitrario, and that is correct. Okay, so we are looking for the term arbitrario. Now, when you say arbitrary, this is something na napagkaunawaan, napagkasunduan ng iisang lahi or iisang pangkat. Now, the rest of your choices here would be likas, dinamiko, at masistema. When you say likas, it is natural. Now, all types of cultures would uh, naturally form their own language. Dinamiko, that means uh, palagi siyang may pagbabago. No? So dati, hindi pa uso yung mga marites. Hindi pa natin ginagamit yung term na marites sa mga chismosa. Pero ngayon, alam na natin yung um, 
ibig sabihin ng salitang marites, ghosting, no? your catfish, these were words that it did not exist uh, 10 years ago. But now, of course, these are words that we already are using because, of course, due to the changes in time, due to the changes in our environment with our technology, our language is dynamic, and so we have to adapt different types or new words, okay? Mas sistema, of course, we all know languages would always have the system, no? System, this would mean the grammar, the syntax, uh, their morphemes, their phonemes, etc. Okay, so arbitrario ang ating compact na choice. Next one. Anong uri ng panlapi ang ginagamit sa mga sumusunod na salita? Binilad, sinampay, at tiniklok. Okay, Ma'am Catherine Villian says, gip lapi. Okay, a lot of you are saying gip lapi. And of course, that is the correct choice. No, That's your answer here. Binilad, your root word here would be the, the word bilad. Okay, and you have your panlapi in the middle. No, So in ay isang panlapi na natatagpuan sa gitna ng isang salita. And so this would be gip lapi. Sinampay, yung root word mo ay sampay. And in, found in the middle, that's also your panlapi. No? So gip lapi ang tawag natin dito. Tiniklop, tiklop yung ating salita. Ang in ay isang gip lapi. Okay, so gitlapi po yung ating hinahanap. Uh, several types of your panlapi. Unang-una, unlapi na inyong nakikita sa unahan ng inyong salita. Uh, kunwari sa salitang umiyak. No? So your root word is iyak. Your um here is an unlapi na tatapuan sa unahan. Hulapi, of course, this can be found at the end of the word, no? sa hulihan ng inyong salita. Pigain, for example. So piga is the root word. In here is a hulapi. Okay? Next one, kabilaan. This means meron kang uh, unlapi at hulapi. Okay? For example, paligayahin. Ligaya is your root word. And of course, pa is ang inyong unlapi. At hin ay inyong hulapi. So this would be kabilaan. And lastly, you have laguhan. Ang laguhan kompleto. No? So may unlapi, may gitlapi, at may hulapi. Ang um, example ng word natin dito, ipagsumigawan. Yung inyong root word ay sigaw. Um ay isang gitlapi. Ipag ay isang unlapi. At um, an ay isang hulapi. No? So, kompleto yung inyong laguhan. May unlapi, may gitlapi, at may hulapi. But your choice here would be gitlapi for this question. All right, next one. Okay, the Naik Revolutionary Assembly was convened by blank in April 1897, creating the first cabinet of the revolutionary government. Who is your choice? Okay, sino po yung inyong choice? Sino yung nag-convene ng Naik Revolutionary Assembly? Sabi ni Ma'am Chean, Emilio. Emilio Aguinaldo. Okay, Andres Bonifacio. Emilio Aguinaldo. Aguinaldo Mabine, sabi ni Facebook user. Aguinaldo. Alright, yung ating pong magiging choice dito ay Emilio Aguinaldo. No? So tama po, siya po yung ating pangulo during that time. Hindi po si Andres Bonifacio, no? X po yung Andres Bonifacio. So Emilio Aguinaldo po yung ating magiging uh, choice in this question. Okay, so Emilio Aguinaldo ang ating choice. Now remember, you have two factions of your Katipunan during that time. You have the Magdalo versus the Magdiwang. Ang Magdalo was under Baldomero Aguinaldo na pinsan ni Emilio Aguinaldo. Uh, they felt that it was time to replace the Katipunan and form another kind of government and they were based in Kawit Cavite. So again, Magdalo that was under Baldomero Aguinaldo, the cousin of Emilio Aguinaldo. They wanted to replace the Katipunan. On the other hand, you have the Magdiwang. A Magdiwang naman was under Mariano Alvarez, uh, that was, or who was the uncle of Andres Bonifacio. You all know na meron um, Cold War, no? merong matinding, um, matinding kompetensya between Aguinaldo and Andres Bonifacio. Okay? They, they did not want to replace the Katipunan and they were based in Noveleta, in Cavite. Okay? But the correct choice here would be Emilio Aguinaldo. Emilio Aguinaldo po yung ating choice. We go to the next question. Pag-aaral ng mga tuntunin sa pagbaybay ng mga salita ay patlang. Okay? Sabi ni Facebook user, orthographia. Sabi ni Ma'am Kim, orthographia. Sir Emmanuel, orthographia. Okay, and of course, tumpak na choice natin dito would be orthographia, no? So, tuntunin sa pagbaybay spelling, no? Spelling ng mga salita, that would be orthography or orthographia. Now, what about the rest of the choices, no? Ito po yung rest of your choices here. 
Uh, semantika, this one pertains to kahulugan. That's meaning semantika. Ang inyong syntaxis ay ang pag-aayos ng mga salita para makabuo ng makabuluhang pangusap. That's syntax. Syntax or syntaxis. Yung inyong morphologia naman ay tungkol sa estruktura ng salita. No? Morphology. Structure ng inyong salita. And of course, you have Phonologia, which pertains to makabuluhang tunog ng so phonemes, ang inyong phonologia, study of your phonemes, okay? But we are looking for orthography or orthographia, orthographia, okay? So orthographia po yung ating hinahanap dito. Again, you are going to have a chance to download our PDF files later. Now, I'm pretty sure hindi tayo aabutin ng alas gist tonight. Because of course, ma mahaba kasi yung ating discussion kahapon because of the do's and don'ts sa let, no, kung ano yung mga dadalhin, and so on and so forth. Pero ngayon, uh, items lamang yung ating uh, ira-run through. No? And of course, your quizzes, the copy of your quizzes, 100 items with all the choices, and the answer key would also be uploaded after this discussion. So hindi po tayo masyadong gagabihin. But of course, stay awake. No? We only have a few more days left before your uh, licensure exam for teachers. Okay, so orthography po yung ating hinahanap in this item. We move on with the next one. Who was the last Spanish Governor General of the Philippines? Okay, yung inyong Spanish Governor General, hindi din nawawala sa left. Okay, so we are looking for the last one. Mm -hmm. Rios, sabi ni Sir Mike Echo. De los Rios. Again, meron pong answer key later. No? Meron po tayong ina-upload na quizzes, yung buong quiz po ninyo, no? 100 items, plus the answer key at the end. Yung basa po ng answer key is from left to right, no? hindi po pababa. I-check nyo po yung numbers para hindi po kayo magkamali. Okay, De Los Rios, De Los Rios, and that is a correct choice. So, Diego De Los Rios, the last Spanish Governor General of the Philippines. Now, lahat ng inyong Spanish Governor Generals ay paborito ng let, no? So let's take a look at the rest of them. Lopez de Legazpi, Miguel Lopez de Legazpi, of course, was the first governor general in the Philippines, okay? Now next, si Rizzo, siya naman yung second to the last. Lumabas din ito in 2019, no? So si Rizzo, Francisco Rizzo, second to the last na governor general of the Philippines. The last one again was Diego de los Rios. Next one, si Claveria, always present sa let nyo. He was the one who gave us the surnames, the different surnames, Spanish-sounding surnames. Next, Vasco y Vargas, of course, very popular due to the galleon trade and tobacco monopoly. Also, very common question in the let, the galleon trade opened trading between Manila and, of course, Acapulco in Mexico. Okay, Acapulco in Mexico. Next one. Despujol, he was the one who order, ordered the exile of Rizal to the Pitan. No, it was Despujol who exiled Rizal to the Pitan. And si Pula Vieja naman ordered Rizal's death. Okay, so tandaan yung dalawang to, no? hindi po sila magkaparehas, hindi po parehas ng Governor General. Yung uh, si Despujol po, siya yung nagpatapon kay Rizal sa dapitan. Si Pula Vieja naman yung nagpapatay na kay Rizal, no? execution ni Rizal. And of course, si Esquerdo, Siya yung isa sa mga pinaka mabagsik na naging governor general natin. He was known to be the iron fist. Okay, the governor general with iron fist. That's Esquerdo. That's Esquerdo. Okay, so again, Diego de los Rios. Tandaan itong slide na to. Lahat ng ito lumalabas po sa inyong licensure exam for teachers. And of course, lalong lalo na sa inyong social science na majorship. Okay, so uh, tandaan lahat ng ito. All right, we go to the next question. Ang pinakamababang level ng wika na informal ng likha at nabuo sa pagsama-sama sa mga salitang pinaikli o pinahaba ay patlang. Okay, dito medyo may um, may kaguluhan o no? Mer merong confusion. Who is your choice? Or what is your choice? Okay, I see balbal. Okay, merong kolokyal. Balbal, kolokyal. 
All right, the correct choice here would be balbal. Okay, balbal po yung inyong magiging choice dito eh, dahil yung pinakahint nyo, pinakamababang libel. Okay, pinakamababang libel ng wika. Kasi pareho naman po silang um, binubuo sa pamamagitan ng pagpapaikli na yung balbal mo. Even kolokyal, pwede din pa, paikliin. No? Pero yung pinakahint mo po ay pinakamababang libel ng wika. Ang inyong kolokyal, merong mga pagpapaikli pero mas ginagamit siya sa pang-araw-araw ng inyong kolokyal. More common than your balbal and of course a level higher than your balbal. Your balbal is talagang lowest level pinakamababang antas ng wika. Okay? So, balbal po yung inyong magiging sagot dito. No, that's your slang. Hindi po kolokyal. Alright? So, again, tandaan yung clue is pinakamababa. Huwag kayong mag-focus dito. No? Huwag kayong mag-focus. Kahit po yung inyong balbal ay hindi din formal. Informal din siya. Okay? So, pinakamababa talaga balbal yung inyong magiging choice. Okay? Next one. Okay, so I've just uh, included the discussion of colloquial. No? So iba po yung colloquial. Yung colloquial, um, it is used day in, in day-to-day -day living. No? So in the daily basis, for example, tai, tatay, no? pwedeng colloquial siya. Um, mas common kesa sa balbal. Yung balbal mo talagang, kumbaga, eh, ginagamit na siya sa mga uh, pinakamababa din yung antas sa sosyudad natin. All right? Now, panlalawigan or sometimes also called lalawigan din, ito yung mga... Uh, nakikita natin sa iba't ibang lalawigan, of course, may Cebuano, may Hiligaynon, may Chabacano, merong um, Ilocano, okay, sa so iba't ibang salita. Now, you also have pambansa, ito na, of course, yung ginagamit natin sa buong bansa, kumbaga uh, lingua franca na siya, no? lingua franca na. And of course, you also have pampanitikan, ito yung mga nakikita nyo sa ating um, literature books. Okay? Mas malalalim na sila, malalalim na. Alright, next one. Which Philippine president is known as the father of social justice and of the national language? Ito, hindi din nawawala sa ating licensure exam for teachers at sa SOCSAI. No? Medyo marami tayong SOCSAI items tonight. Okay. Philippine president known as the father of social justice and of the national language. Kung hindi kayo sigurado sa social justice, sigurado na kayo, uh, tumpak na kayo dito sa ating national language. Okay, so sino po? Sabi ni Sir Crew Brian, Manuel Quezon, Ma'am Sherry Amor, Manuel Quezon, Ma'am Genevieve Malinao, Manuel Quezon, Sir John Michael, uh, Manuel Quezon, Ma'am Cindy, Manuel Quezon, and Manuel Quezon, of course, ang ating, ay hindi manual, no? Para na-autocorrect siya, no? Man, Manuel, hindi Manuel L. Quezon. Okay, so Manuel Luis Quezon, yung inyong magiging choice for this question, no? Yung ama ng ating wikang pamansa, national language, and the father of social justice, Manuel L. Quezon. Now, let's just have a run through of the different uh, uh, Philippine presidents that we've had and uh, we have at present. Okay, so Aguinaldo, he was the first and the only president under the Malolos Constitution, the first Philippine Constitution. Okay, first Philippine Constitution. That's um, Aguinaldo, no? Emilio Aguinaldo. Now, Quezon, of course, we've mentioned. He is known as the father of social justice and of the national language. He was the first president elected through voting. And of course, he also ruled us during the Commonwealth. When you say Commonwealth, um, it's the transition period, no? Kung saan tayo ay, um, tayo ay tinuruan ng mga Amerikano para maging independent. Okay, so that's Commonwealth period. Laurel, of course, during his time, nagsimula yung Kalibapi. Uh, he was known as a puppet president, and together with his family, they put up the Lyceum of the Philippines. Okay, Lyceum of the Philippines. Next one, uh, Osmeña, he was the first Visayan president, and he also started the PNB, the Philippine National Bank. Next, Rojas, he was the first president of the New Republic, and he was known for parity rights. Okay, so he was known for uh, the parity rights. Ito yung lolo ni Mar Rojas, yung, pari uh, yung parity rights nyo. Ang sabi niya, may equal rights yung mga Filipino at mga foreigners over our natural resources. Okay, so yan po yung sabi ni, um, ni Manuel Rojas, lolo ni Mar Rojas. Next one, si Quirino, he started the social security Si Magsaysay, of course, he quelled the Hukbalahap no nagsimula during the time of Quirino. Nag, nasupo niya yung Hukbalahap and he was known as the man of the masses and Amboy. Okay, so he opened your uh, Malacanang to the masses. And of course, he was the first president uh, to use the Philippine Barong okay, in, in international 
international uh, meetings no ginamit na niya yung barong Garcia was known for his Filipino first policy austerity no so tipid-tipid sabi ni Garcia he was also known as the bard from Bohol and prince of Visayan poets he was the first to have been buried sa libingan ng mga bayani okay so that's uh, Garcia next one Si Makapagal, this was just dado, just dado Makapagal pa ito. He changed the Philippine independence from July 4 to June 12. No? So July 4 is now celebrated as the Filipino-American Friendship Day. Instead of being the Philippine Independence Day, nilipat yung Philippine Independence on June 12. No? That's just dado Makapagal. He also started the Philippine Veterans Bank. And during this his time, what started was the first land reform law. And he also gave us the minimum wage law. That would be makapagal, just dado makapagal. Next one, si Marcos Sr., this Ferdinand Marcos. Uh, he was the one who said the Philippines would be great again. Okay, so very common question then sa inyong licensure exam for teachers. Cory Aquino, she was the first woman president in Asia, in any country in Asia. And she gave us the family code. Okay, so family code po, that's Cory Aquino. FVR, he was of course well known for Philippines 2000. Just very recently, lang namatay si FVR, no? He he was known for Philippines 2000, and of course, uh, buwan ng wika na uh, is celebrate sa Agosto. Yung reason why August is our buwan ng wika is because of the birthday of Manuel Luis Quezon na Agosto din, no? So that's FVR. Estrada, of course, during his time, na capture yung MILF. Uh, he was also known for what? Weather, weather lang. Makapagal Arroyo naman, Gloria, she was known for Roro, and she also started your extended value added tax, your EVAT. And Noy Noy Aquino, he was well known for the No Wang Wang policy, and he initiated the K-12 movement. And of course, after Noy Noy, you have Duterte and Marcos Jr. Duterte, of course, was the first uh, president from Mindanao, Lumas, lumabas po yan in twenty. In 2019, no, yung last prior to uh, 2021 in September na let natin, lumabas yung the first um, president from Mindanao, your answer would be Duterte. Marcos Jr., of course, the current president. No, wala pa masyadong uh, balita uh, about kay President uh, Bongo Marcos at present. Okay, But of course, si Duterte naman, naging well-known siya for his war on drugs. Okay, So the correct choice uh, sa ating uh, question again is Manuel Luis Quezon. We go to the next item. The reunion was successful because the alumni coming from the different parts of the country were gathered blank in the venue. Is it all together with space or all together one word, one L? Mm -hmm. Unity, sabi ni Sir John Michael Ibarbia. Unity daw si President Bongo Marcos. Okay, all together, all space together, or all together in the one word, one L. Ayan na, all together, no unity, sabi ni President Bongbo Marcos. Okay, the question is, the reunion was successful because the alumni coming from different parts of the country were gathered blank in the venue. The correct choice here would be all space together. Okay, all space together, hindi all na one word with one L. Bakit? No? Ano yung pagkakaiba ng all together with one L, one word, and all together na two words with two Ls? All together here means completely and considered as a whole. For example, you say, we have finish the pizza all together that means completely na ubos yung pizza no so all together this all together means completely as a whole all space together naman this means everyone together or everything together so dito all together dapat yung inyong magiging choice no so everyone every alumni or all the alumni uh all the alumni together no so all space together with two l's that would be your correct choice all right so all plus uh, together po na two words yung ating magiging choice. We go to the next item. Give an example of a heterotroph. Okay, give an example of your heterotroph. Yung question yung dito kanina sa inyong quizzes was, which of the following is a heterotroph? But of course, since you cannot see the choices, I just revised it to give an example of your heterotroph. Ayon, grasshopper. Ah, okay. So, medyo tanda nyo pa yung choice, no? Tanda nyo yung inyong sagot kanina. 
Okay. Heterotroph, animal, sabi ni Ma'am Ivy Cheska San Jose, grasshopper, sabi niyo. And of course, that is a correct choice. Now remember, when you say heterotroph, these are your consumers. No? So these are your animals. But when you say um, before that, no, before uh, before we go to the next term, your heterotroph again. Uh, these are your consumers. These are the animals. Hetero means many, no, so they they actually have many sources of food. They cannot make their own food. They cannot produce their own food, but they can get many different sources of food. And of course, you have three types for this. What's the difference between your herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores? Please put that in our comment box. Ano po yung pagkakaiba ng herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores? Okay, ayan daw yung choices. Sabi ni Ma'am Jovelin, grasshopper, moss, fern, algae. Okay, so yung choice there would be grasshopper. Okay, herbivores eat plants. Carne, meat. Okay, carne. Okay, so meat and omni, both. Okay, so when you say herbivores, these are the ones who eat plants alone, carne, meat alone, and omni, of course, both plant eater and meat eater. Okay, now the other term that we were looking for is autotroph, no, auto, auto, on their own. Okay, so these are your producers, also known as producers, and these, of course, are your plants. Okay, so that's autotroph. Now, of course, you don't have to, you, you should not forget your decomposers. And decomposers, manaman, these are the organisms that bring back the nutrients to the soil by attacking decaying matter. You know? So, in attacking nila yung decaying matter, and so they recycle the nutrients to the soil. Okay, that's your decomposers. And of course, you have the difference between your food chain and your food web. Pag sinabi mong food chain, no? so food chain is isang linya lamang, it's just linear. For example, here you have um, the sun's energy, very common question, Salet, no? what is the only source of energy on earth? Your answer would be the sun. Okay, so the sun. Then you have the plants, your producers, your autotrophs, making their food in the process called photosynthesis. You have your grasshopper. It, of course, is a heterotroph, and it is a primary consumer. Bakit primary consumer? Because it eats the plant. No, una una siyang consumer. Your primary consumers are herbivores. So yung kinakain naman nila ay plants. Then once the grasshopper is eaten by the next organism, the next organism is, of course, called your secondary consumer. The next organism that eats this would be your tertiary consumer, you know, tertiary consumer in a certain food chain. Now, when you say food web, of course, samot sa rin na nagkabuhul-buhul na, intertwined na ang feeding habits ng different organisms. Okay, so that's your uh, food web and this one is your food chain. Okay, now, sinama ko rin dito yung inyong energy pyramid. Lumalabas po ito sa inyong licensure exam for teachers. Your light energy, the sun. Again, as I've mentioned, this is the only source of energy on Earth. If there is a question, or you have the different, um, different organisms here. You have your banana, you have your fly, you have your... Uh, parrot bato or pelican, then you have your jaguar, uh, toucans pala, ayan, toucans and jaguar, okay? If your question is, which among the following organisms has the highest amount of energy, what will be your choice, okay? If you have bananas, fruit flies, toucans, and jaguar, and the question is, which among your organisms has the highest amount of energy, what will be your answer, Facebook user, kahapon po na-discuss na natin yung yeast. Yung yeast nyo po ay kumakain ng sugar, no? They feed on sugar or carbohydrate, not on the cane matter. Okay, jaguar, bananas, producers, primary consumers, Sir Romnick, banana icon, banana, primary Okay, so again, kung ang inyong magiging tanong, no, iba sa inyo ay nagsasagot ng fruit flies, meron din jaguar. No? So yung inyong tanong, kung ang tanong ninyo, if you are shown your food chain or your energy pyramid, at saka yung question is, which among the following has the highest amount of energy? Your answer would be your banana. Your answer would always be your producers. Okay, because sila yung nag utilize ng energy coming from the sun directa. No? Wala na silang pinagdaanan. No? That's your producers. And you can see it here. No? You, your next 
organism can actually just get 10% of the previous um, organism's energy. So from 10% from your banana, pag kinain ng fruit flies mo yung banana, only 10% yung magiging energy ng fruit flies mo. Pag yung tukan mo, kinain niya yung fruit flies, 1% lamang ng energy yung malilipat sa inyong secondary consumer. Pag yung jaguar mo, kinain niya yung tukan mo dito, 0.1% na lamang yung kanyang energy. Okay? So, banana po, producers yung inyong magiging sagot. Now, what happened to the rest of your energy if only 10% of uh, the energy is transferred to the next organism? What happened to the 90%? The 90% of your energy is lost in the form of heat. Okay, so nalulost po siya in the form of heat, binabalik sa environment. And of course, we've mentioned na meron ka din decomposers kapag ka any of these are dead, no, pag namatay, yung inyong mga organisms kakainin or uh, mabubulok through the action of your decomposers. And so ibabalik yung, marirecycle yung nutrients ng inyong mga dead matter sa, sa soil, no, because of the action of your decomposers. Okay. Yung inyong magiging sagot to be producers, only 10% is passed to the next organism, 90% is lost in the form of heat, and your decomposers would recycle the nutrients to the soil. Okay, next question. Which is true of metalloids? We talked about this last night, no? sa mga naka-join um, sa ating discussion kagabi or nakakita ng ating discussion kagabi na no? maaaring recorded. What is true of metalloids? Mm -hmm. Okay, both metals and non-metals have properties of both metals and non-metals. That's correct, no? So they have properties of metals and non-metals. All right, now uh, remember the different properties and the properties that we are talking about here. The first property is conductivity. This is the ability to transfer heat and energy. Ito po ay uh, isang characteristic ng inyong metals. No? So pag meron kang kasama sa bahay, kung kunwari, na nakuryente, wag mo siyang uh, tutulungan by the use of a metal pole. No? So hindi po pwede yung metal because dadalo yung kuryente sa metal. Ikaw din ay makukuryente. Dapat eh, yung gagamitin mo ay non-metallic or non-conductive. No? Insulator dapat yung gagamitin mo like kahoy, papel, rubber, plastic po pwede. Okay, so that's conductivity, the ability to transfer heat and energy. Ductility, this is uh, a characteristic that uh, means that it can be stretched into thin wires. It can be stretched into thin wires. That's ductility. Next one, malleability. It can be hammered into flat sheets or it can be easily shaped. Tumalabas ko ito sa left. So dapat alam nyo kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng mga terms na ito. No? Conductivity, it can transfer heat and energy. Ductility, it can be stretched into thin wires. Malleability, it can be hammered into flat sheets or it can be easily shaped. And of course, brittleness naman, it can easily be broken. Okay, so it can easily be broken. All right, but our choice here, true of metalloids, have properties of metals and non-metals. All right, next one. The cry of Tarlac was an uprising that happened in La Paz, Tarlac. In January 1897, who was the leader of the said revolt? Okay. Okay. Some of you are saying Makabulos. Others are saying Dagohoy. Noinoy. Meron ako nakita ng Noinoy Aquino. Okay, Makabulos or Dagohoy. All right, going back to the question, the cry of Tarlac was an uprising that happened in La Paz, Tarlac in January 1897. Who was the leader of the said revolt? The correct choice here would be Francisco Makabulos. Okay, so Makabulos po yung inyong magiging choice dito, hindi po si Dagohoy. Si Dagohoy naman, uh, before we go to Dagohoy, no, you have another cry that is uh, more popular, cry of Pugadlawin or cry of Balintawak. Balintawak, hindi po Balintawak. This is where Bonifacio and his men tore their cedulas. No? So, doon nangyari yung uh, punitin ay yung mga cedula. Okay? So, that was a cry of Pugadlawin or cry of Balintawak. Basically, it was the start of the Katipunan kung saan nag-start nag, uh, yung revolt. No? That's the cry of Pugadlawin or Balintawak. Then, of course, you have Francisco Dagohoy. 
uh, this was the longest revolt. Na? It was in Bohol. That was the Gohoy Revolt. And it was because of the refusal of the priest to give his brother a proper Christian burial. Okay, so ayo ng pare na ilibing yung kanyang um, kapatid. And so the longest revolt in, in Bohol, well, the, the Gohoy Revolt, happened. No? Now, uh, the Gohoy actually died two years bago natapos yung revolt. No? So hindi na niya uh, naabutan yung end ng revolt na yon. Okay, naghalo-halo na sa utak. All right, so your choice again will be Francisco Macabulos. Next one, uh, Tamlot Revolt. It was a religious uprising against the Jesuits naman in the island of Bohol, led by Tamblot in 1621. Okay, so this was a religious uprising in the country. It happened also in Bohol and it was led by Tamblot. Okay, so that would be uh, Tamblot Revolt. All right, we go to the next item. Uh, what is the charge of the plastic comb when it loses some electron when rubbed in silk cloth? Okay, what is your choice? Sabi ni Sir John Antonio, ang daming ganap sa buhol. Tama, no? Meron ka pang blood compact. May sandugo. Mm -hmm. Positive, positive, negative, zero. I mean, Facebook user. Okay, so sabi dito, no? sabi ng inyong question, what would be the charge of the plastic comb when it loses some electron when rubbed in silk cloth? Okay, medyo maraming ligwak, no? Ang tumpak na choice here would be positive. Okay, positive, yung kanyang magiging charge. Bakit positive? Makinig. Okay, makinig po tayo. We have three different subatomic particles. Remember, your atom is a basic unit of matter. You know, everything is made up of matter. And the basic unit of matter is an atom. Now, you have what you call your subatomic particles. When you say subatomic, these are the particles that are smaller than your atoms. Nakikita sa naparte ng inyong atoms. So you have your protons, your electrons, at yung inyong neutrons. Now, protons, electrons, and neutrons, meron po silang pagkakaiba. Yung first na pagkakaiba nila would be in the charge. So protons is positive. Electrons is negative. And neutrons would have no charge, no? hence the term neutro, neutron, neutral. Now, your protons and your neutrons can be found in the nucleus, while your electrons can be found in the electron cloud of your atom. Okay? Now, uh, sa ating question, sabi kasi ng question mo, your plastic comb has lost some electron. Ano ba yung charge ng electron? Since negative yung charge ng electron, the usual kasi would be neutral, no? Kapag ka neutral, the same yung number ng protons and electrons. Pag meron siya limang protons, meron din siya dapat limang electrons. Now, sabi ng inyong situation here, na lose niya, yung ibang electrons. So since na lose niya yung negative na charges, mas marami na ngayon yung protons niya kaysa sa electrons. And so yung magiging charge niya ay yung charge din ng um, protons mo which would be positive. Okay? So positive po yung inyong magiging charge. All right, now your atomic number, dumalabas po sa left, your atomic number would be equal to the number of protons and would also be equal to the number of electrons if your atom is neutral. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, na kapag ka-equal yung number ng protons and electrons mo, neutral yung magiging atom mo, wala siyang, wala siyang charge. And so, yung number of protons, number of electrons would just be equal to your atomic number. Now, um... Atomic mass, on the other hand, would be equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, okay? Your atomic mass is equal to your number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And so kung inyong hinahanap would be the number of neutrons, what you do is you get atomic mass minus the number of protons, okay? Atomic mass minus the number of protons. Lumalabas po ito sa, sa inyong left, no? Lumalabas yung iba't ibang klase ng subatomic particles. etong question, lumalabas. Lumalabas din ito, bibigyan kayo ng atomic number and atomic mass. Tapos yung magiging tanong, how many protons does this atom have? How many electrons does this atom have? Kapag ka 
protons and electrons lamang yung magiging uh, yung magiging tanong dapat equal lamang sila sa atomic number kung ano yung atomic number that would be the number of protons that would be the number of electrons kung yung magiging tanong would be the number of neutrons is subtract niyo po yung number of protons so is subtract niyo yung atomic number from the atomic mass okay so your answer would always be positive whatever bigger number is subtract mo doon yung inyong smaller number yung inyong atomic number okay and that would be your uh, number of neutrons lumalabas din po yan sa sa inyong let at ito itong term na ito ay lumalabas din ng isotopes these are elements with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons kaya different din yung kanilang atomic mass okay so different atomic mass because they have different number of neutrons pero the same lang yung number of protons nila no that's your isotopes that's your isotopes. Okay? Lumalabas po yan sa inyong licensure exam for teachers. So, aralin lahat ng ito at siguraduhin inyong naintindihan. Alright, we move on to the next question. Kung ang kauna-unahang tala salitaan sa Tagalog ay sinulat ni Padre Pedro San Buenaventura, ang vocabulario de la lengua pampango naman, ay sinulat nino. Okay? Sino yung nagsulat ng vocabulario de la lengua pampango? Okay, Bergano. De Belen. Padre Diego Bergano. Mabini. Okay, Bergano. Bergano. Karamihan choice niyo ay Bergano. And the correct choice here, of course, would be Padre Diego Bergano. Tumpak po yan, no? So, Bergano, yung inyong magiging choice for this item. Now, what about the rest of your choices there? Si Gaspar de Belen was the author of a um, 1704 rendition of the Passion. Remember, Passion, tungkol siya sa buhay ni, ni Jesu Cristo. No? Usually, uh, ito ay ginagawa or ito ay kinakanta during um, the Holy Week. No? So, that's Gaspar de Belen. Si Pedro Valderrama naman was the Spanish priest who celebrated the first Holy Mass in the Church of Limasawa, Cebu, Philippines. Yung kauna-unahang pare na nagmisa sa Limasawa, Cebu, Philippines was Father Pedro Valderrama. And si Father Francisco Blancas de San Jose installed the first printing press in the Philippines. He is known as the father of Tagalog grammarians and he wrote Nuestra Señora del Rosario, at Arte y Reglas de la Lengua Tagala with Tomas Pinpin. He actually was a mentor of Tomas Pinpin. Okay? So kay Francisco Blanca si San Jose, Arte y Reglas de la Lengua Tagala at Nuestra Señora del Rosario. Remember, Nuestra Señora del Rosario yung ikalawang uh, libro na nailimbag sa Pilipinas. Ano nga yung unang libro? Okay? Ano nga yung pinakaunang libro? na nailimbag sa Pilipinas. Mm -hmm. Doktrina Kristiyana. Tama. Okay? So, Doktrina Kristiyana, yung kauna-unahang libro na nailimbag sa ating bansa. Okay? And the second was Nuestra Señora del Rosario ni Padre Francisco Blancas de San Jose. Alright, we go to the next one. In a physics test, ito na, okay, yung inyong mga paborito, math. In a physics test, nine students obtained the following grades, 80, 86, 78, 88, 90, 83, 76, 84, 92. What is the median grade? Okay, ano po yung ating median? 84. All right. Now, if you are given your score distribution, unang una yung muna gagawin would be to arrange the scores from lowest to highest. No, so we arrange muna natin from lowest to highest. And so you have 76, 78, 80, 83, 84, 86, 88, 90, 92. No, so two, four, six, eight, nine. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9. So tama. Now, meron kang uh, sham na scores. Now, since... 9 is an odd number. It's very easy for you to find the median. Okay? So, yung mangyayari, when you get the median, it's the middlemost score. So, dapat equal number of scores sa uh, magkabilang gilid niya. No? And so, the correct choice here would be 84. So, this is 84. There are 4 scores to the left and there are also 4 scores to the right of 84. And so, we know that 84 is your middlemost score. That's your median. Now, what will you do? If there is another score here, say you have 94, no? so meron ka ng sampung scores, how will you find the median? 
Okay, how will you find the median kung meron kang pang sampung score? Mm -hmm. Okay, add then divide, sabi ni Sir Jojit Pagulayan. Add the two number in the middle. Okay, add, get the average. So what you do is you get the average of the two middle scores. Tama po yan. No? So say if you have 94 here, meron ka ng 10 scores, what you do is you get the two middle most scores, so yung number 5 and number 6 mo, 84 and 86, you get the average by adding them, then of course dividing by 2. Okay, so that's your, that's going to be your median. Okay, but in this question, your choice would be 84. Tama yung 84. We go to the next item, math. A ball is drawn at random from a box containing six red balls, four white balls, and five blue. Find the probability that it is white. Okay, what is your choice here? Po pwede, nyong, po pwede kayong kumuha muna ng inyong pen, paper, at mag-solve. Sige. All right, ayan, meron na silang sagot. 4 over 15. Okay, 4 over 15. All right, so here we are looking for the probability. Now remember, for you to get the probability, you uh, find the number or do you use the number of favorable outcomes divided it by the total number of outcomes. Now here we are looking for the probability that it is going to be white. Okay, so white balls there's only four white balls here so that's going to be your numerator four white balls and total number of outcomes you simply add six plus four plus five which would of course give you 15 no? so four over 15 yung inyong magiging choice no wala naman na siyang simplest form or simplest term no so wala na so four over 15 lamang po yung inyong magiging uh, tumpak na choice dito now what if the question is find the probability that it is blue Okay, what will be your answer? If the question is, find the probability that it is blue. Okay, what will be your choice? Kung ganun yung mangyayari. Find the probability that it is blue. Your answer would be what? Okay, sabi ni Sir Kernick Zeus, Cartier, one-third. Sir Manuel Baruga Jr., one-third, one-third. Tumpak po yung one-third. No? Bakit one-third? If your question is find the probability that it is blue, your, your numerator will be 5 divided by 15. And you know there is a GCF between 5 and 15. Your GCF is going to be 5. No? So 5 divided by 5, your numerator will give you 1. And 15 divided by 5 would be 3. So one-third yung inyong magiging sagot. Okay, so what about if the question is, uh, find the probability that it is red. Okay, find the probability that it is red. Ano po yung inyong magiging sagot? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> is it two-thirds? Okay, two fifths. Tama yung two fifths, no? So six over fifteen. You have six over fifteen. Six and fifteen would have the GCF of three, and six divided by three is two. Fifteen divided by three is five. So two fifths in yung magiging choice. Okay, so make sure that you are reading the question very carefully. Very simple lang naman yung ating question dito, no? Make sure lang that alam nyo yung inyong magiging formula for your probability. So favorable, favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. All right, next one. The distance between two towns in a given map is two and three-fourths centimeters. If one half centimeter represents six kilometers, what is the distance between the two towns? Okay, what will be your choice or what will be your answer? So yeah, solve muna. Okay, ano po yung inyong magiging choice if that's a question? All right, I see a lot of 33s, 33, 33 kilometers, memorize na lang to. Okay, again, ano po yung inyong magiging choice if that's the question? 33 kilometers.
Okay, so 33. Bakit 33? All right, so this is simply going to be ratio and proportion ng naman to, no? One half centimeters would be equal to six kilometers. So one half is to six. Hindi ko na nilagay yung unit, no? Para diretso na tayo. And uh, two and three, four centimeters would be equal to x. Ito yung ating nahanap, okay? So what you do, of course, in your ratio and proportion, your the product of your extremes, the product of your outer terms would be equal or should be equal to your to the product of your means, okay? So one half times x uh, should be equal to six times two and three fourths. So, and of course, you need to convert your two and three fourths a mixed number into your improper fraction, okay? So you have one half x, and ng galing yung one half x, minultiply po natin yung one half and then at ang ating x. And of course, you have six times 11 over four. Sa so, anaman ng galing yung 11 over four, we converted the mixed number into your improper fractional. So two times four, that's eight, plus three, that's 11, then copy your denominator four, okay? Now here, you can see, po pwede mo siyang simplify, okay, by using your... Uh, GCF, no, your 6 and your 4, cross multiplication on 6 and 4 mo, merong GCF and that would be 2. Uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3 and of course 4 divided by 2 is 2, okay? So, po pwede mo na siyang simplify. And so, by doing that, uh, okay, you, you can simplify it as 12x or 12 times x equals 33 over 2. Saan ang galing yung 33 over 2? That's 3 times 11, giving you 33. Then, of course, you only copied your uh, denominator of 2 here. Now, for you to get the value of x, you need to divide both sides by 1 half, okay? Divide both sides by 1 half or po pwede din namang multiply yung, yung divide, divide by 1 half po pwede mo siyang i-multiply sa reciprocal ng 1 half which is 2, no? So, you are left with x equals 33 divided by 2 times 2. Again, saan ang galing yung times 2 natin dito? Yung 1 half po, since we are dividing 33 over 2 by 1 half, ginawa ko lamang siya reciprocal ng 1 half at um, minultiply ko na siya, no? So, instead of dividing this by 1 half, we multiply this by 2. Now, as you can see, you can simply cancel the 2s here, okay? Na inyo, sa, sa inyong cross multiplication. And so, the correct choice would be 33, no, 30, 33 kilometers, okay? So, 33 yung ating compact na choice, okay? Mas mabilis siya using operations, yes, Sir Greg Gulanon, uh, but for for other people kasi, of course, in math, you can, yung sinasabi natin lagi, you can kill the the cat in several number of ways, no? Iba-iba yung um, uh, pag-approach mo sa inyong problem, no? Depende sa kung ano, kung, kung saan kayo komportable. Kung pwede din namang order of operations yung gamitin, okay? So, the correct choice would be 33 kilometers. 33 kilometers po yung ating compact na choice. All right, we go to the next item. Monica obtained the following results from her mathematics exams, 80, 82, 83, and 91. What score must she get on the next exam so that her average score is 85? Okay. Nagsilabasan na naman yung mga manghuhula. 89, 92. Discalculia na dia, sabi ni Mama Marie Rose. Okay, now remember, tinuruan na kayo ng ating um, trick no? in this question. So, po, pwede mo siyang uh, gamitan ng long method. No? Kung gagamitin mo siya ng yung pagkukuha ng average na i-equate mo as 85 equals 80 plus 82 plus 83 plus 91 plus x divided by 5. Po, pwede ganon. Okay, or pwede mo gamitin yung minus plus plus, yung ating... Uh, trick na minus plus plus. Okay? So again, sa mga bago nating kaguro, minus plus plus, yung una mong gagaw gagamitin or una mong gagawin is minus. Yung ibig sabihin po, minus mo lahat ng scores from the average. Okay? So minus plus plus, una nating gagawin is minus. minus mo lahat ng scores from your average. So that means 85 minus 80, 85 minus 82, 85 minus 83, and 85 minus 91. Now after that, i-add mo lahat ng difference. Okay, so lahat ng mga results ng pag-minus mo dito, i-add mo. Okay, so plus. So 5, unang una 5, saan ang galing yung 5? That's from 85 minus 80, no? So that's 5 plus 85 minus 82 is 3. 
plus 85 minus 83 is 2. And then you have 85 minus 91, which is negative 6. No? So you add all of this, 5 plus 3 plus 2, that's 10 minus 6, you have 4. Then the last step is plus, no plus. That means you need to add this, the result here, you need to add to your average, the given average. So that's 85 plus 4, giving you the answer of 89. Okay, so 89 is the correct choice. No? So uh, congratulations sa mga nakagamit ng minus plus plus. Yan, sabi ni Ma'am Jenny May Bachelier Abiso, nagawa ko yung minus plus plus kanina. Salamat, Ma'am Nek. Okay, so 89 po yung ating magiging choice. Okay? Okay, so minus plus plus yung ating tumpak na choice. All right, next, uh, yung ating tumpak na choice. Uh, uh, tuloy no, 89 po yung ating tumpak na choice. Next one. A triangle has a perimeter of 50 if two of its sides are equal and the third side is 5 more than the equal sides. What is the length of the third side? <laughs> Ginamit ko po yung memory ko, sabi ni Ma'am Arlene Eucaristia. Twenty matik basta triangle. So pag may nakitang triangle, 20 na kaagad. Okay, so sabi dito, yung perimeter ng uh, yung triangle is 50, two of its sides are equal, and the third side is 5 more than the equal sides. What is the length ngayon ng yung third side? Okay, so again, remember your perimeter is just the sum of all sides, and so we are going to add all the sides of your triangle. We have three sides now since we are talking about your, your um, triangle. Okay, so you have P equals 2S plus, bakit 2S? Because two of its sides are equal now. So 2S plus yung 5 plus S, dahil 5 more than the equal side. No? So um, you need to add 5 to your S, okay? So para makuha mo yung inyong perimeter. Now your perimeter is given as 50 equals 2S. Ito po pwede na lang natin kunin, no? ilabas sa ating parenthesis since hindi mo naman siya uh, combine, no? Hindi, you cannot combine them because they are not like terms. Okay, so plus 5 plus S. Now, 2S and S can be combined as 3S plus 5. Okay, so 3S plus 5. Then, of course, you have the equation 50 minus 5. Saan ang galing yung minus 5? Nilipat po natin yung positive 5, no? We subtracted 5 to both sides of your equation para ma-isolate natin yung ating variable. So 50 minus 5 equals 3S. And you have 45, that's 50 minus 5, 45 equals 3S. Um, now, solving the value of your S, you have 45 divided by 3. And so S here equals 15. Pero yung ating question is, what is the length of the third side? What is the length of the third side? Remember, your third side is 5 plus S. And so, ang tumpak na choice mo would be 20. Okay, so 20 po yung inyong. Um, magiging sagot, hindi po 15, no? Because yung 15, that's just your side. But you are asked for the length of the third side and your equation for your third side was 5 plus S. Dahil sabi ay 5 more than the equal sides, okay? Now, you can also check this, no? So, dapat 50, yung inyong equation dito would be equal to 50, no? If you are going to substitute 15 to all the S's here, you have 2 times 15 plus 5 plus 15, okay? So, you have uh, two, ta two, 2 times 15 is 30, then you have 5 plus 15 is 20. That's your longest side, not 20 kanina. And, and so 50 equals 50, and you know that your answer would be correct. Okay, so um, your answer here would be 20. Longest side is 20. Okay, <laughs> gulo gulo na. All right, so 20 po yung inyong magiging choice. All right, we go to the next one. In the following numbers, ito is, you know, elementary level. In the following numbers, which digit is in the thousands place with TH? Okay, you have 5,672, and then you have decimal, and you have your uh, numbers. Mm -hmm. Four, sabi ni Sir Emmanuel Pulido. Sabi ni Sir Nailar Bradesina, four. Ma'am Wensi Ponte, four. Mam Jovelin Gante, 4. Okay. And of course, ang tumpak na choice mo dito, tingnan natin muna yung ating explanation. Now, if this is your decimal point, to the left of your decimal point, na ito yung once mo, unang-una, then tens place, 
then hundreds place, then thousands. Now, after your decimal point, ito na yung may mga TH na, ito na yung mga trying hard, yung mga less than one, ikaw ay nagsisimula sa tenths, hindi po sa ones, no? walang ones. Una-una tenths, then hundreds, then thousands. Yung tinatanong sa atin ay thousands place, and so that would be four. Tumpak ang four, no? So four po yung inyong magiging choice. Yung one is in is the tenths place, the tenths you place value niya. Three is hundreds. Thousands place mo would be four. Tama ang four. All right, next one. If the counting numbers one to thirty are written down, how many times does a digit two appear? Okay. Ito uh, na discuss natin before na what will your answer? So pag nakita nyo ito sa let, wag na kayong magsulat, wag na kayong magsolve or uh, wag na kayong magtali, no? Dapat automatic na, matik na alam niyo na yung inyong magiging sagot. 12, 13. Okay, 13, merong iilang 12. Okay. Now, if you are going to write the counting numbers from 1 to 30, you have these numbers. We can count the number 2, no? Kung kailang beses nag -appear. you have 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. No? Dalawang 2 sa 22, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. And so, ang tumpak na choice ay 13. Buti may calendar. Okay, so 13 po ang ating tumpak na choice, hindi po 12, okay? Dahil may dalawa kang twos dito sa 22. So again, kapag ka nakita itong uh, item na ito, matik na dapat, 13 na po yung inyong magiging choice. Now, there, there are also some other common questions, like yung common question ninyo na, um, how many prime numbers do you have from 1 to 100? Okay, ano nga yung inyong magiging sagot if the question is, how many prime numbers are there from 1 to 100? Mm -hmm. Okay, 25, sabi ni Ma'am Delu Balukan. 25, sabi ni Sir Romnick Pilan. Okay, Sir Jovan Quintos. Ma'am Catherine Lacanaria. Okay, so tama po yan, 25 yung inyong magiging, yung magiging sagot. No? Again, kung ang question is how many prime numbers are there from 1 to 100, your answer would be 25. Now, what if the question is what is the last two-digit prime number no? that's less than 100? The highest prime number less than 100. Ano po yung inyong magiging sagot? Okay, highest prime number, less than 100. Sabi ni Ma'am Kim, ay 97. Ma'am Erica Libuno, 97. Ma'am Alriza Kako, 97. Ma'am Joveline Alma, 97. Okay, so tumpak po yan, 97 yung inyong magiging choice if you are asked for the highest prime number, less than 100. Okay, so those are some of the very common questions sa let. Okay, we go to the next item. A 10-meter board leans against the wall. The foot of the board is 8 meters from the wall. How far up the wall does the board reach? Okay, what is our choice? Mm -hmm. All right, sabi ni Ma'am Dada Taguba, 6. 6. Okay, na-memorize na, no? Six. Alright, so six, yung inyong sagot, memorize. Okay, 10 meter board leans against the wall. The foot of the board is 8 meters from the wall. How far up the wall does the board reach? Okay, so if this is your wall, ito po yung ating wall, no? And you have your board, ito yung board. Okay, it's 10 meters. No? Yung length ng board mo is 10 meters. Ang foot ng inyong board from the wall, it's uh, 8 meters na distance. So you are looking for uh, this side. No? So how far up is the the board no? sa, sa inyong wall? How far up does the, the board reach the wall? Okay, and of course here, it's pretty obvious you have a right triangle. And so you will be using your your Pythagorean theorem, no? Pythagorean theorem po yung inyong gagamitin. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Your C squared, of course, your hypotenuse, the longest side of your triangle would be this. Now, that's 10 meters. 10 meters or 10 squared equals A squared plus 8 squared. 
your uh, eight here, we simply represented this part of your triangle. Okay, so that's eight squared. Now, of course, we need to isolate your uh, your variable. Okay, you have 10 squared, that's 100, equals a squared plus 8 squared, of course, that is going to be 64. We subtract 64 to both sides of your equation. You have 100 minus 64 equals a squared. 100 minus 64 is 36. Then, of course, you have to use a square root so that you can get the value of a squared of 36 equals the square root of a squared. Your a then would be equal to 6. Okay, so 6 ang compact na choice. Okay, so 6 po yung inyong magiging choice for this item. Next one, Jim has five shirts, three shorts, and two pairs of shoes. How many outfits can he make? Hmm? Sabi ni Sir Mike Echo, six lang pala, hirap pakunin. Okay, 30. Sabi ni Sir Max Iden, Ma'am Yvette Jane, Ma'am Ivy, 30, Ma'am Kennelly Rose, 30, Sir Mark Anthony Punzalan, okay, my equation, 5 times 3 times 2 equals 30, okay, so you simply multiply, no? so 5 times 3 times 2 equals 30 outfits, okay, so 30 would be your answer for this item. Next one, what is the final amount of a principal of 35,000? invested a 3% compounded quarterly for five years. Okay, what will be your answer if you are given this item? Ito medyo complicated na siya kasi compounded interest na compounded quarterly. <laughs> Sabi ng isang kaguro, ba naman itong si Jim? Problema ko pa yung outfit niya. Sabi ni Ma'am Arjun, 40,250. Ma'am Yan Yan, 40,641. Sir Kobe, 50K. Basta. 40,250. Okay, ano kaya yung tumpak na choice? Sir Dondon Magramo, hello po, good evening. Sabi ni Sir Dondon, kailan kaya matatawag name ko ni Mamek? Gusto ko marinig sa live. Hello po, good evening, Sir Dondon. 40,250, mukhang marami ligwak, no? For the hula, sabi ni Mami Yana Fernandez. Okay, now here, again, as we've mentioned, this is not your simple interest. Your simple interest, medyo kabisadong-kabisado na natin kung paano kunin, no? This one is your compounded interest formula, including your principal, because we are looking for the final amount. And this is your um, your formula, no? So, final amount equals a principal multiplied by the quantity 1 plus R here. That's the interest rate in decimal, no? So, 3%. You have to convert this into your decimal now, 0.03. And of course, N, that's the number of times interest is compounded per year. In this case, it says compounded quarterly. So that means um, your N here would be four. No? So apat na beses siya um, na compound in a year. Then of course, you have um, the exponent N, that's still the number of years compounded in a year. And T, the time in years. In this case, yung time in years natin would be five. Okay, so that would be five. All right. Now, using our formula here, you have 35,000. That's your principal multiplied by the quantity 1 plus 0 0.03. Again, that's 3%. Then you have 4 compounded quarterly. And your exponent is 4 times 5. Saan kinuha yung 4 at yung 5? Again, compounded quarterly. So, apat na beses sa isang uh, taon. No? Then, of course, 5. Uh, 5 dito, that's the number of years. Okay. Now, next, you have 35,000 multiplied by the quantity 1 plus, that's 0 0.0075. Ito ay nakuha lamang from dividing 0 0.03 by 4. Then you have 20. Of course, 20 came from 4 times 5. Okay? Next, you have A equals 35,000 times the quantity 1.0075. Again, your 1.0075 came from adding 1 to your 0 0.0075, then you have the exponent 20. Next one, 
the answer no sa pag-add mo dito or pag pag-raise mo into the 20 exponent 20th power ng 1.0075 is this item or this number then multiplying you'll get the answer of 40.641 okay so um mahihirapan po pag walang calculator of course sir Greg Gaspar Bulanon baka makita nyo ito sa math major hindi natin alam kung makikita sa gen ed pero ito po ay galing sa actual gen ed items no so for the memorize na lang din ang ating gagawin because of course yung let mo yung nagbibigay naman ng items nyo sa let eh medyo tamad na hindi na niya pinapalitan kahit yung numbers okay so for the memorize na okay so 40,600 41 yung ating pong choice. Okay? All right, next one. In performing uh prof ed na tayo no, prof ed na po ito. In performing the minuet, first raise your heel, second make three steps forward, the third step makes a point. What kind of knowledge was exhibited? Mm -hmm. Again, hindi po kayo po pwedeng magdala ng calculator if you are not a math major, no? Uh, sa math majorship lamang po, inaalaw yung calculator. Kahit na yung major nyo po ay math, sa gen ed, bawal po kayong gumamit ng calculator sa majorship nyo lamang po. Okay, so wala pong calculator yung hindi major sa math at yung calculator ay ginagamit lamang sa majorship sa math. Okay, procedural. I see procedural. Sabi ni Ma'am Marife, pabatang procedural. Sir Orly Ibero, procedural. Okay, Ma'am Evangeline Nietes, procedural. Okay, and of course, the correct choice here would be procedural knowledge, no? Because you are talking about procedure, procedure. All right, now let's take a look at the different types of knowledge. The first one is declarative or also known as factual knowledge. Now, this is only talking about static information and facts, no? So, information, facts lamang yung kanyang alam. Conceptual knowledge is how you see the relationships between facts so that you can form the different concepts. Then, of course, um, conditional knowledge mo naman, this is knowing which declarative and procedural knowledge to use in a specific condition from the term condition. Kung ano yung condition, kung ano yung konteksto, ano kaya yung mga facts yung aking gagamitin, at ano, pa, ano kaya yung procedure na aking gagamitin. No, that's conditional knowledge. But here, of course, uh, we are looking for procedural knowledge. Ma'am Jabinites, good evening. Kailan kaya matatawag din name ko? Okay, procedural knowledge po yung ating hinahanap dito. All right, we move on with question or the next question. Ma'am Kimberly Sobriera Madriaga Obra, yes po. Nakikita po yung inyong comment. Hello from Sultan Kudarat, si ma'am. Okay, in the 5S formula to create a conducive learning environment, which S stands for cleanliness of the workplace? Uh, for the memorize nyo na to. Okay, ang bilis. Shine ka agad. Shine, shine, shine. Sabi ni Sir Dominic Tagyam. Shine. Okay, and of course, shine. Ang ating tumpak na choice dito, no? Shine. Now, these are your five S's. Unang-una, sort. When in doubt, move it out. No? So, sorting, um, um, kumbaga, eh, pagkatapos mong maglaba or pagkatapos mong ngayon, no? uso na yung laundromat, yung um yung hulog-hulog ng piso no pagkatapos mo ng laba lahat ng mga labahin mo na clean na or lahat ng mga damit mo na na, na itupi na uh, malinis na the first thing that you need to do is to sort okay so iso sort mo muna saan dito yung kay tatay saan dito yung kay nanay saan dito yung kay kuya kay ate etc then set in order place everything there's there, there should be a place for everything and everything should be in its own place no so kung ito ay para kay nanay ilalagay sa aparador ni nanay at ni tatay. Kung ito ay para kay bunso, ilalagay sa aparador ni bunso. Okay? So that's setting in order. Then shine. You have to clean and inspect it. Okay? So ito yung hinahanap natin kanina. No? Shine. Then of course, you have to make up the rules. That is uh, the term that we use there is standardized. And lastly, you need to sustain or make it part of your daily work until it becomes a habit. Okay? So again, that will be sort set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. Okay, so sort una-una, then set in order, shine, you clean it. Then of course, you need to standard standardize it and you need to sustain it uh, until it becomes your habit. Okay, next one. Uh -huh. Which characteristics must be primarily considered as a choice of instructional aids? Okay, what characteristics should you consider? Mm 
Okay, medyo medyo may mga kaguro tayo kasi nahuli na no ngayon lamang nag-join sa classified files lamang no. So sabi ng iba nating kaguro, yung yung iba napakabilis ng sumagot no. Uh, yung iba ay uh, hindi alam kung saan galing yung sagot. Okay, so again, kapag ka meron po kayong mga friends na kukuha ng let, especially sa March, sabihin sa kanila no as early as possible, uh, ASAP ay magpa-member na po sa Team Bruner. Team Bruner po yung ating um, magiging team for March. Okay, para mahasa talaga sila no maging kampante kung paano sagutin yung ating mga licensure exam questions. Okay, suited to objectives, in line with the objectives. Ma'am Sheila Membrido, hello po, good evening. Okay, the correct choice here, of course, would be suited to the lesson objectives. Ito talaga yung pinakabasihan mo, hindi lamang sa inyong instructional aids, kahit sa inyong activity, and then of course sa inyong assessment, no, sa inyong test, lahat po yan dapat ay suited to your lesson objectives, aligned to your lesson objectives. Okay, so objectives, ang ating tumpak na choice. If there is a question about your your primary, primary consideration when you are making your test no in your t your tos your table of specifications you should also go back to your objectives okay so objectives napaka importante all right next one when small children call animals dogs what process is illustrated in cliche's cognitive development theory what is this process called i am see mom jenny may abiso pala team bruner okay so iba yung iba sa inyo um Team Bruner pa, no? Uh, sa March pa mag-detake ng let. Assimilation, schema, schema. Okay, I, I see a lot of assimilation. Ma'am Jessa Tibok, yes po, kita po yung inyong comment. All right, the correct choice here would be assimilation. No? So, um, your small children call animals dogs. Ibig sabihin lahat ng animals, sinatawag niyang dogs. No? Dogs pa lamang, yung schema niya about the four-legged animals na may tails, na lahat sila, tinatawag niyang dogs or doggy. And so, the child still has the same schema to assess here, the same schema. And so, this is assimilation. Okay, this would be assimilation. Now, remember yung iba pang concepts ni Piaché. Una-una yung term na schema. When you think of your schema, isa siyang filing cabinet sa inyong utak. No? Yung kung saan nyo ini-imbok, ini uh, saan nyo sinisave yung different concepts na inyong nalilearn. No? So kahit dito sa pagre-review, meron kayong iba't ibang schema. So that's your schema. It's like a filing cabinet in your brain. Now, when you say assimilation, if you still have the same schema, uh, two S's here, you call that assimilation. Once your schema has already been changed or modified, you see the C's here, change in schema, that would be accommodation. And of course, when you say equilibration, that is the balance between assimilation and accommodation. Okay, that's a balance between your um, assimilation and your accommodation. And so the correct choice here, again, is assimilation. Assimilation po yung ating nahanap. Next one, some children go through a period of intense appetite when they eat or chew on all sorts of inedible substances. This is called blank. Okay, ano yung tumpak na choice dito? Okay, Ma'am Jessa Tibok says pika or pika. Ma'am Michelle Makabenta, pika. Eh, sino my birthday? Happy birthday. Ma'am J. Anbahan. Okay, Pika. Sabi ni Sir Dominic Tagyang, Pika, 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 true. Okay, the correct choice here, of course, would be Pika. No? Yung kung ano-anong kinakain ng bata. No? So that's eating or chewing on all sorts of inedible substances. Yung chalk, yung stick, okay, kinakain ng bata. That's Pika from the term Pika, Pika. Okay, so Pika, Pika. All right, now the rest of your uh, choices there. Anorexia, it is a psychological and eating disorder. No, ayaw mong uh, tumaba. Okay, so that's your uh, psychological and eating disorder. Anorexia. Enuresis is bedwetting. Usually, of course, ito ay nangyayari sa inyong young kids. Uh, hindi pa masyadong controlled no, yung kanilang um, pag, pag iihi. No? That's enuresis. Encopresis, on the other hand, is soiling of underwear with stool. Tumatae, nagtatae yung mga bata. 
Ang mga bata dito ay past na the age of toilet training, usually four and above. At sila ay nagpupoops pa sa kanilang panties, no, sa kanilang underwear. You'd call that incopresis. Incopresis. Okay? Now, we go to the next one based on Edward Dale's cone of experience. Which activity is farthest from the real thing? Farthest from the real thing? What's your choice? <laughs> Sabi ni Ma'am Sherilyn Ofde, feeling ko magkaka-enuresis ako bago maglet. Listening to a radio, okay? Listening to a radio, tama po yan no, for the memorized na, listening to, to radio. Yan po yung farthest from the real thing. Now remember, yung Dale's cone of experience, meron din common question. Your choice there would be, it is arranged from the most concrete, no, from the base, concreto, uh, going to the most abstract that can be found sa tip ng inyong cone of experience, according to Dale. Now, if the question is about the nearest, real, uh, nearest to the real thing, your answer may be watching a demo pag merong attending exhibit no magkasama yung watching a demo and attending exhibit your choice would be attending exhibit no mas nauuna yung attending exhibit then of course kung wala itong dalawa at may contrived experience that would also be your choice no? because this talks about simulation okay so simulation na yung, yung contrived experience so again tandaan pag merong watching a demo, wala itong dalawa watching a demo, yung inyong magiging choice kapag nearest the real thing. Kapag ka may attending exhibits, magkasama sila ng watching a demo, attending exhibits po, yung inyong magiging choice. Pag wala ang dalawa, may contrived experience, contrived experience, yung ating magiging choice. Okay? But for farthest from the real thing, listening to radio, ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, now ito, inad ko lamang, no? um, nilagay ko lamang dito kasi... Uh, maari makita nyo din ito sa inyong licensure exam for teachers. Meron ding ilang items based on this. The difference between direct instruction and indirect instruction or guided instruction. Another term for your direct instruction is expository and didactic. Okay, sometimes a question didactic, expository, that would be your direct instruction. Direct instruction is used to teach contents, no? contents, facts. That's your direct instruction. Similar information directly available, no effort to look for it. So, yung ginagawa, yung ginagamit sa ating, um, yung, yung sa ating review, that will be direct instruction. If you are pressed for time, konti na lamang yung time mo, and you will be teaching facts, you use um Direct instruction, okay? So direct instruction po yung ating gagamitin. Guided instruction naman or indirect approach, this is called exploratory. This is experience-oriented. It's developmental. This is for the formulation of concepts, principles, skills, attitudes, and values. Information may not be available, needs to be discovered. No? So this one takes longer time. Okay, so this takes longer time. Sino yung Team Thunders? Hashtag LPT, Facebook user lamang po yung aking nakikita. All right, so again, this, this is guided instruction. When the question is which one is uh, student-centered, your answer would be indirect instruction, indirect approach, or guided instruction, or it can also be exploratory. Pag yung question is about um, teacher-centered, no? subject matter-centered, your uh, choice would be direct instruction or expository or didactic. Okay, now we go to the next one. Uh, these are the different steps, no? Ito naman po ay different steps ng ating uh, direct instruction. Ah, si, ay, si Ma'am Tin Acabo. Hello po, Ma'am Tin. Kumusta po? Na-miss natin si Ma'am Tin, no? isa sa ating mga pioneers. Okay, direct instruction. Ito po yung steps niya. Unang-una, no? Common question sa let. If the teacher would want to use the direct instruction method, uh, ano po yung magiging first step, no? And so, your answer there would be review. Review po yung inyong magiging choice. Okay, so first review, then you have your development, then guided practice, if you practice mo yung inyong estudyante with your guide, then closure, you are going to summarize your lesson, then after that, independent practice na yung mga bata, and of course, you have your assessment or evaluation. Okay, so assessment or evaluation na po, yung last na step ng inyong direct instruction. Okay, we go to uh, the next slide, ito din nagdag ko rin. Yung inyong deductive reasoning at in inyong inductive reasoning, no deductive and inductive. When you uh, say deductive, no deducing, 
you are decreasing no? so from principles generalization to specifics that's deductive reasoning but when you say inductive inductive induce the reasoning from the specifics going to generalization okay going to generalization all right we go to the next item sabi ni ma'am Yulaisa Loren kung nag movie marathon ka sa YouTube kilala mo si ma'am Kim yes pasado na po sila no halos karamihan sa mga team thunders natin tapos sa mag take and so pasado na silang lahat which is true when standard deviation is high okay what is your interpretation kung ang standard deviation ay mataas Hello, Sir Agosto Lego Palermo. Good evening from Iloilo. Okay, spread out. Scores are spread out. Scores are scattered. Scores are far or scattered. Okay, we are talking about standard deviation. Remember, yung standard deviation nyo is a measure of how spread apart the scores are. Okay, so if it is high, that means the scores are spread out. The scores are far from each other, no far apart, scattered yung inyong scores. Okay, so scores are spread out. The higher your standard deviation, the, the uh, widespread yung inyong scores, no? Kapag uh, um, lower yung inyong standard deviation, that means hindi masyadong spread yung inyong scores. Okay, so the scores are spread out, that would be your choice. Next one, in PSA's concrete operational stage in cognitive development, which refers to the ability of the child to perceive different features of objects and situations, for example, toughness in stone, elasticity in rubber, etc. What is your choice? Uh, spread out po yung English ng watak-watak, Sir Mark Rapada. Tumpak po. Okay, this centering. Sabi ni Ma'am Janice Malificiado, decentering. Ma'am Raquel Altres. Ma'am Jezza Jade, decentering. Si Ma'am Mab Gulbi, decentering. Ragamuffin Garcia, decentering. Okay, decentration. And that would be correct, no? So, your hint here would be different features. Iba-ibang features na yung kanya nakikita, no? Hindi lamang nakafocus sa iisa. Meron siya nakikita ng toughness, may elasticity. The different characteristics are already seen, different features. And so, that is decentering. Remember, when you say centration, isa lamang aspeto ng isang bagay yung nakafocus yung, yung inyong anak, yung inyong isudyante. But once nakikita na niya yung iba't ibang characteristics, that would already be decentration, no? decentering na or decentration. Okay, so decentering ang ating tumpak na choice dito. Kung hindi nyo pa po napapanood yung ating classified files 1 kahapon, in, uh, make sure po na balikan nyo, no? panoorin nyo po dahil diniscuss natin lahat ng parte ng um, cognitive development according to PSA. Alright, next one. You arrange the rows of blocks in such a way that a row of five blocks is longer than a row of seven blocks. If you ask which row has more, grade one pupils will say that it is the row that makes a longer line. Based on Piaget's cognitive development theory, what problem is illustrated? Mm -hmm. What is our choice? Okay, I see conservation. Conservation, assimilation. Mom Grace then says conservation. Mom Janet Takorda, conservation. Okay, conservation, of course, conservation, ang ating tumpak na choice dito. That means, hindi pa alam ng bata yung uh, value, no? hindi pa alam ng bata na kahit na pito or kahit na lima, lima lamang dito sa isang row, yung sa isang row naman pito, hindi niya alam na mas marami yung pito kasi yung, naka, yung nakikita niya is the length. Okay, the length, that's conservation. Hindi niya na-conserve yung um, number of blocks, no? hindi pa niya alam. Okay, so conservation po ang ating tumpak na choice for this item. We go to the next one. Every first day of the school year, Ms. Reyes prepared activities that will make her grade two children sing, plan, learn, uh, play. Dapat ito, no? Sing, play, learn, and introduce themselves to the class. What process did the teacher emphasize? Mm -hmm. Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Jess, socialization. 
Ma'am Mansurla, socialization. Ma'am Grace Alcordo, socialization. Ma'am Jen. Ma'am Katrina Mas Millian, socialization. Okay, the correct choice, of course, here would be socialization. No? So socialization, ito yung sinasabi natin na uh, yung, it's not really for, for actual learning, no? na hardcore learning using the books, but it's just for socialization so that they can learn the social norms so that they can learn how to act in a social setting. No? So socialization po yung ating hinahanap dito. All right, next one. Which philosophy influence the cultivation of reflective and meditative skills in teaching? Which philosophy is this? Mm -hmm. Ah, yung kanina pong quiz, may nagtatanong si Facebook user, hindi ko po nakikita yung inyong pangalan, no? Bakit wala pong score? Kasi hindi po, ko, hindi po ako naka-assign ng score per item. Dapat po kasi may point per item, no? So hindi ko na-assign na ng point. And so, wala pong score kanina, wala pong accuracy. Pero you actually have your score, pero wala yung, wala yung, yung accuracy nyo, yung percentage nyo. Pero just the same, nakikita nyo pa rin yung inyong score. Okay? So, yun lamang po yun, no? But it is recorded. Kaya lang hindi po nakikita yung inyong accuracy because hindi ko po nalagyan ng point per item. Okay? So, I will make sure na yung uh, bukas natin classified files, the last classified files ay malalagyan natin ng score. Uh, so, bukas po yung last natin na uh, discussion sa inyong classified files. Again, kung may time pa po kayo, balikan lahat ng items natin. Uh, may mga nagre-request no, kung maaaring may blessings for the major. Maghahanap po ako at ilalagay ko po sa inyong majorship. Um, so, antabayanan niyo po yan. And of course, you are still going to have your classified files part 3 tomorrow. Another 100 item na test. And 7 p.m. we are still going to discuss by Friday... We will have your last minute, no last minute tips for uh, the let. So Saturday po, we are going to schedule um, a mass. No? So it's um, it's going to be live then sa Facebook. No? So antabayanan niyo po yan. Uh, if you have your intentions, po pwede po kayong mag-donate. No? So uh, just just um, make sure that you are following our Facebook page para po updated kayo sa mga um, remaining activities natin. Ah, yes. Before I forget, no, yung mga final coaching natin, i -re open din natin, of course, yung atin pong classified files, i -re open din natin. Again, sa ating uh, final coaching, no, sa ating mga links, please do not share it with non-members para po ma mas unahin natin yung ating mga kaguro, yung ating mga members. And wag po kayong mag-stop no, with one link hanggang hindi nyo na-perfect. Wag, wag pong pabalik-balik kasi every time na bumaba na... na Bumabalik kayo, nababawasan ng slot yung iba nating kaguro. Okay? So tapusin muna bago mag-stop or bago mag-jump into another link. Okay. Alright. Now, the correct choice here, of course, would be Zen Buddhism. Now, remember, your um, hint here would be meditative. Meditation is by Zen Buddhism. Confucianism naman would be for ritual. no? Ritual Confucianism. Now, Siddhartha Gautama... Uh, si Siddhartha Gautama, of course, siya yung nagtatag ng Buddhism. No? So, uh, that Siddhartha Gautama is, he was a prince from India. Okay, so, but the correct choice here, again, that's Zen Buddhism. Next one, running and jumping fall under what level in the psychomotor domain? Malapit na po tayong matapos siguro, uh, iilang slides na lamang. Okay, fundamental. Sabi ni Ma'am Ann Abad Empresito. Michelangelo Castro. Fundamental. Ma'am Wensi Fonte. Fundamental. Okay, Sir Rike Molina. Fundamental. And of course, fundamental yung ating tumpak na choice here. Now, fundamental movement. Now, let's take a look at the different levels sa inyong psychomotor domain. Now, this is was by Anita Harlow. Okay, so una-una, reflex movements, your reflexes, uh, learning in response to different stimuli, that's reflexes, flexion, extension, stretching, postural adjustment, basic fundamental movements, ito yung ating hinahanap, uh, inherent movement patterns which are formed by combining different reflexes, so pushing, pulling, manipulating, etc. Perceptual abilities, perceptual refers to interpretation of various stimuli in your environment. Then, of course, you have the different physical activities. 
you have skilled movements ito na yung ginagamit ng ating mga um, yung ating mga athletes no yung ating mga dancers and non discursive communication yung highest communication through bodily movements so through your postures gestures facial expressions okay but of course yung ating hinahanap would be fundamental fundamental next one what technology integration is achieved by teacher Nero, who creates who creates a rich learning environment in which students regularly uh, engage in activities that would have been impossible to achieve without technology for example their own powerpoint presentation lessons so what's your choice okay ano po yung inyong choice transformation transformational Okay, transformation, karamihan choice. Uh -huh. And ang tumpak na choice natin dito, of course, is transformation. Transformation, yung pinakahint yung dito is that would have been impossible to achieve without technology. Yan po yung pinakahint, no? that's transformation. Now, let's take a look at your uh, slide. No? Technology integration, this is a common language for um, professional development. And of course, may dalawang parte yung inyong PIM or technology integration. Kung hindi nyo pa po napapanood yung ating video, take note po. Meron po tayong video sa ating YouTube channel na ilagay nyo po Gurong Pinoy Technology Integration Matrix kung saan diniscuss ko po tong dalawang aspeto ng TIM, no? yung learning environment at yung levels of technology integration. Okay, so punta natin yung different levels of technology integration. You have the first level entry. The teacher here just starts using technology and the teacher has full control of the technology inside the classroom. Adoption level, the teacher still has control, but the students are already using the technology at the basic level. No, pinapagamit na niya sa isudyante at the basic level. Hindi na siya entry. Entry kasi um, siya lang yung gumagamit. Wala pa yung isudyante. Adoption, the students are already using the technology at the basic level, but the teacher still has a control over it. Adaptation. The students explore, okay? So, nag-explore na yung mga isudyante, but the technology is still the teacher's choice, no? So, may control pa rin yung teacher, pero yung student, malaya nang nakakapag-explore ng technology. Next one, infusion. The students decide which tool to use, okay? So, meron na silang choice uh, sa infusion mo. Dito na nagsastart kung saan yung teacher has no control over the, the technology. Now, the students can already decide. Then, of course, you have transformation. This was the item that we were looking for a while ago. Unconventional use of technology to achieve goals. Otherwise, the activity won't be possible without technology. Okay, so ito po yung ating hinahanap kanina. No? Ito yung ating nakita. Otherwise, the activity won't be possible without such technology. Transformation ang ating tumpak na choice. Okay, we go to the next item. Uh, yes, uh, sinali ko lamang, no? ito na yata yung lights, last slide natin. I'm not sure if tama. Sinali ko na lamang yung some R nyo dito. This is also part of your technology. Anong ibig sabihin ng S? This is substitution. Technology acts as a direct substitute pero wala pang functional change. Kunwari, um, tayo, no? yung ginagamit natin instead of face-to-face, -face, we are using online teaching. So that's substitution, the substitution na use ng technology. Augmentation, technology acts as direct substitute, substitute at meron ng improvement. No? So may inaugment na. Okay? So technology is also the direct substitute, pero meron ng improvement. That's what you call augmentation. Next one, modification. Technology allows for significant task redesign. Meron ng pagbabago talaga sa design no ng inyong uh, bagay na na substitute nga ng inyong technology now the last one is redefinition technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable para siyang transformation kanina no hindi posible without technology that's redefinition okay so that's your sum r all right next one Okay, meron pa pala. It is a tool that serves as a guide for teachers' continuous learning and development within a calendar year. It is structured in a way that every professional teacher regularly and individually prepares, implements, monitors, and updates the plan. What is your choice for this item? Okay, Mom Jessa says IPPD. Okay, IPPD, all right? And tumpak, of course, yung IPPD. Now, this is what you call individual plan 
for professional development. Okay, serves as a guide for teachers' continuous learning, structured in a way that every professional teacher knows. So that's individual. The teacher uh, prepares, implements, monitors, and updates the plan as a person, as individual. So that's IPPD, Individual Plan for Professional Development. All right, next one. A negative discrimination index means what's the meaning of your negative discrimination index? Very common question, Celeb. Anong ibig sabihin kung ang discrimination index ay negative? Mm -hmm. More from the lower group got the item correctly. Skewed to the right. Skewed to the right po ba? We are talking about negative discrimination, di po skewedness, no? At tumpak po yung choice na yan. More from the lower group got the item correctly. Negative discrimination, that means mas marami sa mga bobits mo yung nakakuha ng item correctly. Kukonte sa mga matatalino yung nakakorek sa item na yan. Okay? Now, remember the different ranges. Basta negative, remove na kaagad, no? Or reject the item na, discard the item na. Dapat more than or higher than 0 0.39 yung discrimination index para ma-preserve mo yung item, para ma-accept mo yung item. More than 0 0.39 yung discrimination index 0 0.30 to 0 0.39 you you can revise it you know possibilities for enhancement 0 0.20 to 0 0.29 need to verify or review 0 to 0 0.20 it's a poor item reject or review and of course yung mga negative reject ka agad no wala nang pag-iisipan pa diretso reject na okay so more from the lower group got the item correctly to manage behavior, the teacher needs to be able to identify the mistaken goals of students. What is the hidden goal of students who refuse to cooperate or participate? Okay, what is our choice? Ano yung magiging sagot mo kung ito yung uh, tanong, no? To manage behavior, the teacher needs to be able to identify the mistaken goals of students. What is the hidden goal if a student refuses to cooperate? Or participate. Ayaw niyang mag-participate. Okay. Isolate self. Isolate self, yung ating tumpak na choice dito. Now, remember this was uh, by Dracors, no? So, according to Dracor, meron kang apat na mistaken goals of students. Unang una, attention getting, no? So, gusto niya makuha yung attention mo. Kung hindi mo siya binigyan ng attention, maghahanap siya ngayon, pupunta siya sa next, no? Which is power. Gusto niya magkaroon ng power inside your classroom. If you did not uh, respond to this, the student is going to um, seek power no? if you are not going to respond to attention getting tactics and yung estudyante. Now, if an adult counters with greater power, the student will seek revenge. Mahahurt yung student mo kapag ka napakita ka na mas powerful ka sa, kaysa sa kanya. And eventually, the student is going to isolate himself. That's the display of inadequacy. And so the, the child is no longer going to participate inside your classroom. Okay, so that's isolation of self. Okay, next one. The distributions will most likely be blank if a class is composed of brilliant students. Okay. Ano yung magiging itsura ng inyong score distribution kung karamihan sa inyong mga estudyante ay brilliant? Okay, skewed to the left, negatively skewed. Skewed to the left or negatively skewed. Okay, and of course, ito yung ating tumpak na choice. Ang skewed to the left or negatively skewed, remember opposite siya. No? So kapag ka skewed to the left or negatively skewed, mas marami kang matatalinong isudyante. Pag skewed to the right or positively skewed, mas marami kang bobits na isudyante na this discuss po namin yan kagabi no, sa mga kaka-join pa lamang or sa mga hindi pa na panood yung classified files 1, panoorin nyo po para mas maliwanag ang inyong pagkakaintindi. Okay, in gestalt psychology, our ability to perceive a whole without first noticing its parts is referred to as blank. Okay, anong tawag dito sa gestalt psychology? Okay, emergence. Emergence. Alright, emergence, nakikita kong choice niyo 
And of course, emergence, ang ating tumpak na choice here. Okay, so that's emergence. You also have three other um, concepts no, under gestalt psychology. Reification states that we can perceive more space. Space naman yung reification. Okay, so reification, you can see more space. It tends, or your brain tends to expand. Okay, multi-stability, uh, ambiguous perception. Ito yung, um, for example, meron kang... Um, image, minsan nakikita mo yung vase, minsan nakikita mo yung dalawang taong gustong maghalikan or dalawang taong magkaharap. No? So, there are several interpretations of an image that's multi-stability, some sort of optical illusion. Invariance suggests that we perceive objects in the same way, regardless of their rotation, deformation, and scale no? from the term invariance. Walang pagkakaiba-iba. Okay, parehas yung pagka-perceive mo ng objects kahit na i-rotate pa yung objects, uh, palakihin, paliitin, that would be invariance. Okay? A student gets a numerical grade of 80. What is his descriptor for his level of proficiency? Okay? Ano yung descriptor na ginagamit if the um, grade is 80? Okay, Ma'am Malot says uh, satisfactory. Ma'am Jessa, satisfactory. Ma'am Ann Abad, Emprestito. Satisfactory. Ma'am Katrina Kuna, satisfactory. And of course, yan yung ating choice. So satisfactory, remember the descriptors sa inyong K-12, no? From 90 to 100, that's outstanding. 85 to 89, very satisfactory. I-memorize po ito, no? 80 to 84, satisfactory. Then you have 75 to 79, fairly satisfactory. Below 75, that did not need expectations. Now remember also yung retention, no? If all the subjects na, na nakapasa yung isudyante, the, the um, student is going to be promoted to the next grade level. Pag um, yung failure niya is 1 to 2 lamang, no? Dalawa or isang failure, kailangan niyang kumuha ng removal, no? Um, at pag naipasa na yung removal, po pwede na siyang ma-move or ma-promote into the next grade level. Kapag katatlo naman or more yung kanyang bagsak, siguradong retain siya in that same grade level na wala nang removal. Okay? Next one. In Erickson's Psychosocial Theory of Development, what is applicable to the statement, I am confident in carrying out my plans to a successful conclusion? Okay, what is your um, choice? Uh, remedial, okay? Remedial po yung term, no? Hindi po removal. Tatlong fail, wala na. Pag dalawa or isang fail, po pwede mag-remedial. Pag naipasa, ay po pwede pong ma-move, no? Ma-promote -ma into the next grade level. Okay, I see a lot of initiative. Okay, and initiative, of course, ang ating tumpak na choice here, no? When someone has initiative, that means he or she has been given chances to be confident at what he or she is moving. So kung kaya naman ng inyong isudyante or kaya naman ng inyong anak, give him or her a chance to do it para magkaroon siya ng belief sa sarili, magkaroon din siya ng initiative, no? Kayang-kaya niya, meron na siyang belief sa sarili niya, kahit wag mo na siyang utusan ay gusto niyang gawin na. Okay? So that's initiative. Remember yung uh, psychosocial theory of development ni Eric Erikson, you have eight different stages, no? Trust versus mistrust during infancy. Then you have autonomy versus shame and doubt for toddler's age. Initiative versus guilt preschooler. Industry versus inferiority school age. Identity versus role confusion that's adolescent. Then you have intimacy versus isolation during young adulthood. Then you have middle age generativity versus stagnation and ego integrity versus uh, despair naman for older adult. Okay? Now, um, meron po tayong video, no? meron tayong video na professional education discussion na makikita nyo din sa ating YouTube channel na lahat ng ito ay akin diniscuss, lahat halos ng theories ay akin diniscuss. So balikan nyo po yun, no? professional education, itype nyo professional education, gurong Pinoy. Meron kayo makikita ang video na kulay purple yung kanyang thumbnail. Panoorin nyo po yun, no kasi doon tinuru tinuruan ko po kayo kung paano ito mamemorya at pa Ano matandaan, no? At kung ano. We are going to see each other again tomorrow. Please do not forget to answer Classified Files Part 3. Of course, our discussion at 7 p.m. tomorrow night. This has been Coach Mac of Guru Pinal. Of course, I leave you the saying, malit man na buti ng mga kaalaman. Ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginawaan. Maraming